Cyclone Michang closing in on Chennai on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 4th. So we've definitely got activity with the formation of Cyclone Michon yesterday and now closing in on the eastern part of India and intensifying quite staunchly as it approaches the coastline. It's the 79th storm to form this year and we're code orange for it right now, significant threat. In the Atlantic, we're in the off-season now, if you haven't uh, realised, 180 days until the next hurricane season begins, and thankfully there's nothing to look at, but there's still just a, just a tiny chance that we might get an off-season system before the end of the year. In the Eastern Pacific, nothing to look at here either, 163 days until next season begins, but we're still using this year's names until we get to the new year. As you can see, just a few areas of... Uh, local thunderstorms over the open ocean. In the Western Pacific, we're now giving a 20% chance for an area of interest that might develop as it moves through Micronesia later on this week and then eventually head towards the uh, Philippine Sea and eventually towards the Philippines themselves. Cyclone Michong there, we're giving it 60 miles per hour right now, that's nearly 100 kilometers per hour and it is headed very close now to the coast near Chennai, Tamil Nadu and into Andhra Pradesh. And a 10% that we've given towards the west of that as well in the Arabian Sea, a system that could initially affect the Maldives and then through into western India later on. And this is a 90% chance in the Coral Sea possibly here over the Solomon Islands at this point. Uh, we're just waiting to see whether it's got a closed circulation and then we may be able to call it a tropical depression. That could be a big one. Well, let's take a look at latest satellite imagery. Certainly filled out very nicely uh, Cyclone Michong there. We're looking at it from the comms one satellite here, looking over the eastern coast of India. Um, this is just a glancing view from Himawari 8. It's just at the very bottom of that image there. In fact, it's partially obscured there, but certainly banding from the north side of it, really extending further north. And here are the floaters then, taking a proper look at this. It was very broad initially. It's tightened up really nicely in the last uh, 20 four hours and as you can see it is getting rather close towards making a landfall now which is expected within the next 24 hours but looking at this loop it may well be within half that time the next 12 hours uh, probably during daylight hours on December the 4th that's Monday and this is latest radar right now as well as the storm slowly gets closer uh, just off the coast of Chennai it's going to move just north of there moving northwestwards at the moment and it will eventually end up into Andhra Pradesh. Now this is rapid scan imagery of the area of interest that looks like it's going to develop into that next cyclone on the far left now on this imagery here wide shot over the Solomon Islands at this point they're going to get a hell of a lot of rain from this system um, and there's some more views here from the Force 13 floaters as well and you can see convection really bulking up the western side's looking great eastern side we still need to get some confirmation on whether it's closed over there and then we can ascertain whether this is yet a tropical cyclone but it's nearly there well, sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific remain fairly good, around 30 degrees in a few spots off the coast of Mexico, uh, but elsewhere the ocean is shutting down. In the Atlantic, those temperatures are still looking decent for uh, some of the area there as well, uh, mainly in the Caribbean Sea, around Jamaica and Haiti, above 28, nearly 30 degrees Celsius, and still good temperatures out in the main development region, but nothing's going to form. In the western Pacific, still very warm temperatures in those uh, lower latitudes, the Philippines Sea and out over the Micronesian Islands basically where that system's headed uh, over 30 degrees in a few spots and through the Philippines temperatures decreasing there actually in a few spots down to about 26 to 28 
Bay of Bengal looking okay as well, 28 degrees generally, falling where that cyclone is right now, we're around 27 degrees up until landfall looks okay. The western coast of India very warm there as well, southwest Indian Ocean off the coast of Madagascar looking very good, up to around 30 degrees Celsius, about 27 off Mauritius and La Reunion, and in the Australian region of Western Australia, extremely warm in those higher uh, reaches, and in the Coral Sea ahead of this upcoming cyclone, uh, temperatures looking decent decent for a time there as well. Looking at the South Pacific through Vanuatu and Fiji, those temperatures really heating up nicely, up to around 28 degrees in most of those spots. Compared to average, the Western Pacific is slightly above average. The Southwest Indian Ocean very much so, especially in the subtropical zone. Indian, North Indian Ocean looking generally slightly above average. Coral Sea is not far from the average, and around Fiji is slightly above as well. The El Nino effect is still very prominent there in the Eastern Pacific equatorial region, and in the Atlantic it's generally about 2 degrees above average, although we are pretty much shut down. A lot of oceanic heat content but it's in the very low latitudes and not really where that cyclone potential cyclone is but there is still some energy there certainly the eastern pacific holding on to its last dregs of the year there before eventually being usurped i imagine and in the western pacific still uh, a healthy little corridor there from uh, guam through to the uh, northeastern philippine islands so here's Cyclone Michong there towards its landfall. GFS actually has it uh, moving northwards and not making landfall for a, quite a while actually. Uh, almost halfway up um, Andhra Pradesh before it actually does according to that model run. I'm skeptical about that. I think it will make landfall and then turn north looking at the latest satellite imagery because it looks like landfall is going to be coming up pretty soon and that might mean that the storm weakens a bit quicker than what's been implicated by this forecast. But nonetheless, winds getting up to at least 100 kilometers per hour at times. Now, this is the Australian region. This cyclone really starting to form and build, uh, moving slowly at first near the Solomon Islands, and then it picks up speed and intensity as it moves out over the open coral sea. And there it is, reaching a very healthy strength within that five day period, maybe getting to category three status on the uh, Sapphire Simpson scale. And model support is converging regarding its track and intensity on a general southwestward movement towards Australia there in that medium range. Rainfall estimates then, uh, they've stepped down just a little bit over eastern India but we're still expecting a deluge for some areas, especially around uh, just north of Chennai, maybe even including the city itself, and further north into Andhra Pradesh. Now looking first of all on the east coast there, getting up to about 12 inches in some of those areas, uh, that's around 300 millimetres. Further north towards Visakhapatnam, temp uh, rainfall getting up to about 8 or 9 inches, and that would be around 200 millimeters and even off the west coast of India for a second potential tropical cyclone there we could get locally uh, very high rainfall amounts and near the Lakshadweep Islands as well we're looking at possibly very high amounts of rain next uh, maybe next week and this weekend. In the longer range, day 5 to 10, looking out for this potential system in the Western Pacific, 20% at the moment, but the GFS still has it developing into a tropical cyclone, and not just a, a meager one, it gets to borderline typhoon strength there, looks like it actually does reach typhoon strength, as it reaches the Philippines towards the end of that 10 day period. So it is a little while away, but it is gradually moving along that alley, makes landfall very close to where that big earthquake was yesterday uh, in the northern tip of Mindanao, and then on through the southern Philippines. Now this next system off the west coast of India, initially affecting the Maldives, which would be a turn up for the books, and then moving northwards, maybe affecting the Goa region, and then moving inland uh, towards uh, the northeast there towards the end, uh, and maybe a big uh, quick spin up storm that gets quite a bit of strength a small system forecasted there but it's quite far out just to, to keep watching that one for the next few days to see how it progresses on the model runs. Now Australia, well look at this, this is a powerful cyclone visiting the country, it's the first time in a while that we've, we've seen something like this, but it is becoming more likely. Uh, several models are now on board with something like this scenario, and that could be a major cyclone impacting the coast near Rockhampton towards Gladstone and then continuing southeastwards uh, to southern Queensland and maybe even affecting the Brisbane area with tropical storm force winds. 
wins in 10 days time. That could still change, keep watching for updates. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products as well as our full season individual storm animations and Hone t-shirts, um, which is still a darn sight better than actually trying to find Hone in real life. Well, in the silly range, that typhoon continues to uh, smother the Philippines and then out over the uh, South China Sea, curving up towards the northwest, and then it loses its momentum and gets completely swashed by that uh, massive plume of uh, wind shear from the northeast, which just pushes it on towards the southwest, and that storm is history. Just about reaching Vietnam, possibly with some strong tropical storm force winds there. That's extremely long range and I would wait quite a bit before uh, taking any action on that. And you can join our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from around the world. Well, on this day, we go back to December the 4th, 1986, where the Western Pacific was putting on a late show, unlike this year. Uh, Typhoon Kim was a Category 4, but look at that image. Uh, that was uh, a be it's about a day or two prior to today, uh, but certainly it looks like it reached Category 5 status, although the JTWC only have it as a Category 4 at peak. Well, it was still a Category 4 on the 4th day of December, and it was on a weakening trend though as it moved northwestwards. Tropical storm Lex also formed behind it near the eastern Micronesian islands and became a brief weak tropical storm. Back to today, we're obviously on high alert for the current cyclone near the coast of India. If we do get another name in the Atlantic before the end of the year, it will be named Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it will be Selma. And in the Central Pacific, it will be Hone, and that list doesn't roll over next year. In the Western Pacific, the next name is still Jellawat, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's now Rimal. Of course, Cyclone Michong is the latest system to be active, and that makes six this year to be named. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name could be upon us soon. It's Jasper in the Australian region. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it will be Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, our next name is Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.